Okay. <clears throat> Not that I'm trying to preach or that I am saying that I am of more importance when I'm trying to say it and you should listen to me. But it, it lets me feel as if you have the ability to connect with what I'm saying. I am open and free forum for all. No judgment, no criticism, no hate. It's just a dialogue. And I think that anybody should be, when they hear that, should feel honored and welcome to come into that conversation that, that, long, that starts off with, for those who have ears to hear, should hear. Now, what's your opinion on the babies enter, if these, these babies are like people entering into the kingdom of heaven? And then he asks, shall we enter as, as babies? What's your interpretation on that? So, when he says they are like newborn babies going into kingdom, I, I don't believe that he's meaning that only babies can enter it. I think it is in babies, newborn babies, or the ones that are have not been corrupted by the world that we live in. They, are, they have the pure innocence of themselves, and they are still in touch with their spirituality almost entirely because they know nothing. They are still new to this world, and they have nothing else but what they had beforehand. And that's the spiritual aspect. So in order to enter the kingdom of heaven, you would want that spiritual connection and that spiritual awareness in full. If not, and you're corrupted, there is, there is a strong possibility you don't make it in. So when they ask, should we, should we become babies and enter in? It's a metaphor for spiritual awakening, spiritual alignment, opening the third eye. It is not that you should only, only babies should get in. It is become as innocent or as spiritually aware as a baby is. When it says, when, this, when these words fall upon certain ears, if it's not meant for you, you won't understand it. You won't get it. You won't, under, you won't feel what it's trying to say because it's not meant for you at this point in time. So therefore, these words may seem, you know, allegories, allegories that may seem weird, that may seem big because it's not meant for you. But if you're ready to hear this, if you're ready, if you have ears that are ready to hear, come hear this word because you are ready to, to receive the message in which that I'm going to give you, in which that I'm going to partake because your ears are, are open, are open cup. Versus some, some people go in, they be like, oh, I know this already, but I just want to hear what you got to say. Oh, that's bullshit. I don't want to hear that. You be like, bro, if you think it's bullshit, why are you even here? Because you're taken away from the people who are here to get something out of this. You're taken away from these people who are here to genuinely grasp the concept, who are genuinely here for this. But now your negativity is now tainting the world, which leads into the next part babies entering into the, the kingdom of heaven as you said they're fresh into the world all they have is their spirituality so therefore when you have ears to hear this that's all you're here for you're here just to receive this message but when somebody who ears is already filled with something else their their ear there is a field with some more bullshit but now they want to see okay is this person a real deal or are they coming to to spew some more bullshit yeah, but their energy, their tankness, it comes in and it kind of, if it's not what the, to their standard, right, they kind of taint the atmosphere for everybody else. Babies, they have no knowledge of nothing. So think about it, when you cross into a new area, you only have what you know. And as you said, they only have the spirituality because that's what they knew before they, they came into this world. They were spiritual beings because we're all light beings. We're all spiritual beings. So therefore... Before we cross over into our, before we take up on our human flesh in order to experience this particular experience on this plane of existence, we only as babies, we only knew the spiritual existence before this. So, yeah, when we enter in into the heaven, when we, when we cross that threshold or whatever spiritual place that we go to next, we're going to take our um, human existence, our human presence, our human experience with us. Because it's an, it's an experience, right? Because you, 
you, you would never know about doing mushrooms if you haven't did mushrooms. But once you did mushrooms, now you can talk about your experience. So when you're going into heaven, now you're going into this place of glory. You're going into this place of supposed to be everything. Now you're fresh and anew. You're you're in a new world that you have no 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 real concept about how it it flows and exists. That's my interpretation. I, I want to add words. to something that you would say. You just keep going. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So I, I, I was wanted to add. What I was saying about the babies. Uh, the, the, Indian philosopher I was listening to and guru, I, I watched the video and he it had a very, very valid point which I believe is pretty true. Uh, the statement is, I'm paraphrasing, children before four belong to the world. Children, children after four belong to you. And that, the reason why that is is because it's the belief that Children under four are still still fresh. They're still new. They're, it's still innocence. I'm, as you can be as innocent as newborn boy, baby, but then when you get to four, you start learning the things. You start doing. You start learning to lie and hide and stuff like that. You start becoming like those around you. But before it, you're still still losing the innocence, the connection from what you had over here, and you, as you feel more in the world. So. I just wanted to add that to you. Yeah. The statement of the babies. Yeah. So, again, I, I believe both our perspectives on the babies were exactly the same. We have a different point point of view in regards to um, the ears part. But, again, our o overall general statement of understanding it is the same. And that's why I love to have a back and forth because it's different. Everybody's life is from their perspective right we all see the same things but due to our experiences and you know how we interpret things we see things on a different level we see the same things but we experience it on a different a different level that doesn't mean nobody's wrong <laughs> right 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 no. it doesn't mean that, that that you're wrong because yeah, you're because absolutely comes right comes in with their own point of view. exactly and that point of view is shared by somebody else but as long as we all convene at the and end at the same place. Regardless of where we start, we all want to end at one at one place. Which is why I tell people when it comes to religion and all of that, it's not about if you're a Christian. It's not about if you're a Jew. It's not about if you're a Muslim. It's about you you putting love into something morally correct for you. Mm -hmm. However you choose to to guide through those moral aspects of things, that's up to you. But as long as you do it with love, that's all that matters. So therefore, that's why the freedom of religion kind of shakes a lot of people because that allows people to be Satanists, but they do it out of love. Actually, if you look at the religion of Satanism, it is actually a, a, just the opposite. It's just the same thing as Christianity. And it says in the principles, but the name of him is just the opposite of what Christians believe is good. Satan. But they do practice love, treating your thy neighbor like your like your friend or whatever it is, uh, respecting other people's properties, showing people love and respect. But another Satan. thing is too is complete honesty in everything that you're doing. Right. Complete transparency in everything. Like one, one, one of the examples that I heard somebody use was if I poison an apple and I give it to you without you knowing that it's a poison apple, I have committed murder. But if I poison an apple and I tell you this is a poisonous apple, I poison it with this, this, and this, anyone who consumes this apple will die. If you say, I want to consume that fucking apple, I'd be like, it's a poisonous apple. You yep. know, I'm telling you that if you consume this apple, you're going to die. You're like, yep. And you take that at that point of time, it's no longer murder. And that that goes back to what I was saying earlier, yeah. where it's the absolute truth. It relieves you of karmic, uh, karmic. What's the word I'm looking for? Karmic, like the yeah, like I, I'm not 
Consequence. It's not, yeah, that's, yeah, that's a good word. yeah. Like it, it shouldn't come back on me because you killed yourself because you you, you personally consumed the poisonous apple. Yes, it, that's not on me. It's on you. It's on you. You made a choice. You willingly did what you did, even though I said what would happen if you do this that thing. Yeah, you, you tested willingly it, you did. Fucked around and found out. You, fuck, <laughs> you keep fucking around, <laughs> you're gonna find out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> as happen. simple as that. So there, therefore, but but it's the same thing. It's Christianity. It's just not following Jesus. It's following Satan. Now everybody may be like, but that's wrong. Death is death. A choice is a choice. Whatever choice that you make. A sin is a sin, according to the a Bible. A sin is a yeah. sin, right? But a choice is a choice too. Yeah. We all have the right to make choices. Yep. At the end of the day, regardless of what choices we make. We have the right to make these particular choices. And as long as you make a knowledgeable and a reasonable choice, or as long as you give it, you're giving the option. You have to be given the option to yes. choose. Yes. All right? And every day, we're given the option of, quote, unquote, good and evil. It's, a, it's like a moral code to choose from, do I want to beat this motherfucker up just for looking at me crazy? Or do I just want to acknowledge the fact that he's probably looking past me? He's probably looking at my hair. He's probably looking at my logo. And he, might not, he might not even be looking at you with negativity. Probably can't even fucking see me because he ain't got his glasses on. One of those two, yep. <laughs> yeah. Right? Just hear a voice. Huh. Oh. Or probably be like, oh, that sounds like my cousin. Oh, no. Not not yet. Yet. Yep. Mm -hmm. But yeah, or exactly. So could I make this a nigga moment? Or could I just be like, there's probably this it's just a coincidence. There's a peace, peace. there's a there's a number of list of reasons of why this person could be looking my, my way. Maybe this person looking past me, this person having a bad day. Maybe I remind this to, maybe I maybe I fucked this girl in the past. Maybe it happens. It, it happens. <laughs> it happens. But if neither one of you act on it, then it's not necessarily wrong on you to think that way. If you chose, if you chose to act on it without realizing the full scale of it, not actually understanding the absolute truth, that oh no, you're looking past me. Oh yeah, I, I fucked your girl a while ago. Okay, that's why you're looking at me. You or know, or I fucked your girl. You were upset. Why were you upset? Because at that point in time, I fucked your girl. You were trying to make things right, and then things couldn't be made right because now she had already experienced me. And now you couldn't get that bitch back. <laughs> you, can't get, you, you still ain't got a bat because of me. That's a fight, with brother. That's, that's a really good fight. Someone said to me, "That's a fight right there." But at that point, the choices are out the window. The it's all, out the window. But it's also choices of the use of the word. Should I acknowledge that? Because it's true. It's <laughs> just, <laughs> because something like that would be true. That would make it, you know, uh, less harsh. Then it's it's harsh. The, reaction. the harshness and the reaction is what we have to choose. That's yeah. what we have to choose. And with that choice, <laughs> what was Spider Man's death? It was great power comes great responsibility. And power choice is a big responsibility. It's a big fucking responsibility. And that's that's where people have a issue at because they don't know. They're so used to being, well, I'm just a blunt person. So I'm always going to choose the Vi blunt path. And I'm going to choose violence every time. Every yeah. fucking time. Simply, I'm not trying to be mean to you. So by me giving you the harsh reaction, that's just me as a person. I'm not, I'm not really, I don't want to fight you. But I have to give you the honest truth. Right, right. Right? You, now, your reaction may be, oh, be, be, because of the fact that you're not where I am spiritually. So therefore, you know, which is why I said, once I seen people who were able to deliver harsh words softly, mm -hmm. hey, I don't know if anybody told you, your music is not that great. <laughs> <laughs> you probably shouldn't put it all into rapping. Maybe, maybe you should just stick to DJ. Maybe you should stick to DJ. Maybe you should pick the painting. Maybe you should stick to babysitting, knitting. <laughs> Maybe you, you should go real, to school. Yeah, totally. You, maybe you should go to school. You're real good with kids. Yeah, <laughs> to deliver that news is T.I. Right. Uh, he, yeah, yeah, he, he, he has yeah. a certain perspective. Expeditionally. <laughs> I'm but, but he he has a way of operation. Okay. 
Yeah, he, he has a way of doing things to where he delivers a lot softly. And to where when you take it, you're like, I know this nigga's telling me that I'm wrong. Yeah. I know he's telling me that I'm trash, but it's respectable. And it, it's, it's not blatant to the point where any, anybody hears it. It's like, oh, you got school. What are you going to do about it? It's but, like a, wow, this is a teaching moment. The reason this is why a teaching he, moment. He look, said why you're bad. The and reason why he, reason. and the reason why it's that way is because what it does is he takes takes your mind one step above where you currently are. A lot of people don't use T.I.'s words on the daily. No. Right, so therefore... you Most have to, common people you will speak to in a conversation. Yeah, they know what they mean, but they have to think about it, use it in a sense, and then see how that pertains to them. And then, was that a shot? Or was that a genuine piece of advice? Or was that not for me at all? Yeah, yeah. Right? So now you have to figure out how he's using this word in context. It puts you, you have to burn a couple of calories <laughs> to, <laughs> to understand what he's saying. But by, by me saying, your, your music is trash. Period. In the statement. T.I. will come through and say, well, you know what? It, once I dissect the bars and I get to thinking of the philosophy of it, and when we break down your words into like this and like this and like this, when you say this, it don't really make sense. When you try to add it with this, yeah, these yeah. words don't really go together. The shit just don't make sense. Now, here's a solution for you. You can either try to make talk about a subject and make this flow, or you should go get a day job. What else are you good at? The last part where people can listen to it. But but after they go home, they can sit there go. They could. I I see what he's saying now. Yeah, especially because he laid it down for him. You said this, then you went over here and said this, then you went on the other side and said this. That shit don't make sense. It's supposed to be a story. It's supposed to carry people. They're supposed to be able to relate. Your bars aren't relatable. You're not a good songwriter. Uh, baby train. Baby train. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm talking about. Rhythm and flow. Yeah, got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you're not a good songwriter. Your rhythm, you don't have any rhythm. Your shit ain't flowing. Your shit's trash. Me on the other hand, I'd be like, bro, your shit's trash, bro. He, he's definitely by your definition. He's the one that says, for those who have ears to hear, should hear. Because once you understand his words, you're like, okay, I know exactly what the fuck he's saying. Yeah. But for those who who are who want to listen, you want to learn that they're step down. They want to take that advice. That it's constructive to them because you can you can take negativity and turn it to a positive. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But some people take that negative and fuel their negative, and yeah. create a that what what they what they they think. Okay, I'm gonna go beat this motherfucker up. You think that's going to, what positive is coming out of that? I feel better. But you go to jail, you get a battery charge, boom, boom. And then it's tough for you. Now you're mad about the situation that you already did. And now. And that you did have anger. Now you're angry about that. And now forever, this person is a whole ass nigga because he ruined your life. Yeah. But yeah. you made the choice and to, to choose anger at that one point of time. Yeah. yeah. So I, I help people identify that one, that one choice. That I, one I, choice I, that, that you fucked up at. I, 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 I've been that person who's ruined. I've been myself. I uh, lost my car keys and I got pissed about it. I found my car keys. So I, I broke my phone and I had a backup phone. And so what I did was I tried to get my backup phone to tell people my phone was broken. And then, so what happens is the phone was moving slow, so I snapped that phone in half. Yeah. So now I'm angry that I, I, I broke my phone, my second phone. I broke my first because I broke my first phone. And then I, I was so upset because all it began yeah. with my keys. And my day is now significantly worse because I just, instead of trying to look at it and go, okay, well, there's a positive in this. Maybe I can react a different way. I just immediately went to rage. And then to feel, follow that up with more rage because it was of the class rage. And then it just leveled up. And I'm just, just glad I happened to be at home and I was down the street. Because my if I walked outside and I saw my neighbor, my neighbor could have got his hands. I was in that much of rage. <laughs> Just because. Just because. If he would said, hey, uh, you got to mow your yard over here. Your grass is kind of going on my side. He might have yeah. got clipped. Like, bitch. <laughs> what the fuck you looking at my yard for? 
Why are you all in my motherfucking business, Stanley? Huh? Yeah. You be lying to me? <laughs> now he wastes his ass out with you. It's spiral of shit. Now you like, now I'm looking for, I'm giving you a reaction just so you can react to put these hands up. <laughs> Turn around, you will, so you can around if I have a reason yeah. to put these powers on you. And now I can't go home because uh, the cops are looking for me. All because if I lost my keys and then spiral down a word. And, and, and instead of saying, you know what? That was on me. Instead of me putting these keys in my fucking pocket or hanging them up in a place where I normally hit them, I just set them down somewhere. That reminds me Obviously, I, I, I don't know fuck where because I can't fucking uh, find them. They got put the hangs up on the wall so I can put shit on them, some more shit on them. I'd yeah. be losing my keys still to this day. But yeah. until you make a place, a key rack or a key bowl, right, you will always have to, uh, I normally sit them here and I normally don't. Yeah. Until we, but that that's life though. We have to create spaces in order for us to be successful. Once we create these spaces for our life to flow efficiently, it'll flow efficiently. But if we don't do, if we don't put that work in, in order to create the efficiency lane, right? The, our message won't fall on nobody's ears to hear if we don't have a message. I do disagree with you on that though, that, 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 that for those that you, that, for those with ears to hear, to hear, I don't believe that it needs to be a message. I feel like it just needs a, a, just a statement, something that people need to hear. But because, somebody has to put out a statement. Is what I'm statement. saying. Okay, it doesn't. But my, my, my meaning is, is that it doesn't need to have a meaningful message. No. I can literally just say the Packers won today. You know, I, I'm a Cowboys fan. Who the fuck cares about the Packers? But the, the Packers fan. The Packers fan. But well, everyone yeah. who heard me say that makes that as a, as a choice to say it does not apply to me, or I do not care, or fuck them, fuck what you're saying, whatever else. And I don't think it needs to be a meaningful thing for for everybody. I but think it just needs it, to have that. Stand. That's that's where we get to our niches, right? The ear, the a uh, 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 ear to, to hear, meaning if you're if you can even hear these words, right? You're here for a reason. I guess not everybody can hear. Not everybody can hear. But which, those who can. But those who can. And those should. who have seek this knowledge, right? But even if they're seeking, nobody will hear what you have to say if you actually don't say it. You have to make the statement. As yeah. you said, yeah. you have to make the statement. True, true. If the statement is simply the Packers won. You have to make that statement. True. In order, and you have to put that statement out there. In order, in, in order for it to impact whoever it got impacted. Even though, you're kind of in the way of my path. It's kind of one of that, that weird area. You're like, I don't want to seem like there's roles here, but you are the closest. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's really what it is. is when yeah. I'm working here, I'm closest to the water. So if that's the water, then who is this the water? But that's the same thing with me and my my wife, right? It's yeah. like, it's not a, I'm not yeah. trying to assign sexist roles here. It's simply, you're just the closest mm -hmm. to the door. Or you're just the closest to, to that particular thing. Do you mind? To, to some degrees, there's got to be sexist roles. I, I, I definitely do believe it. Because there's no way around it. Be, because... Hold on, wait, 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 wait. No, I, 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 do, I do believe this. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stand on this. It it shouldn't be, it's got to be, it's got to be sexist roles. Because on the extreme ends of things, where. uh if a robber breaks in my house, that sexist role is gonna kick in, and Allison's like, "You're the man in this house. Right. You're gonna go. You're gonna go deal with this." In my balls, in my, in my drawers, my balls out, whatever. I got to handle it. Got to. You know what I mean? Trash be taken out, but that's something that you know. If I'm not in the house, she, she might do. She might put the trash out and do all that, whatever. So it's not necessarily. It's not necessarily a sexist role, but she's gonna want me to take the trash out. And that's you know nice. what I mean? So in, in some senses, it's like sometimes I just. Well, the baby, she's made a child. I, I do expect her to do more of the baby because that's more of a, a mother's thing, more of a woman's thing. I'm most men aren't that great with kids, most. So, yeah. so that's already going to be more perceived to be fall on the woman, which so, is then uh, now a sexist role. Yeah, and you know, to my personal opinion, hold on, let me switch it around. My personal opinion is, uh, Allison, can you turn the TV, TV, TV down just a little bit? 
so good. Like just, yeah, just to hear it. You know, it, it's good on the, the background noise. Fuck. What is that, the remote or your phone? Hopefully the remote. Okay. the remote. Gotcha. So my opinion on it is I highly agree. Because when, when there is an intruder, you want me to be, to be a man, right? Uh, you When it is time for man activities, trash, bugs, clock toilet, clock sink, I got to be a man and know these things automatically. But when it comes to other things, again, I'm hungry. I shouldn't have to come. I, I, me personally, I feel like, you know, dinner, if you cook, right? Or if we, we choose to do things together, you know, we know we, we, we got to eat at a certain time. I shouldn't have to, you know, on my cook days, if I'm cooking dinner at a certain time, on your cook days, I shouldn't have to remind you to cook dinner at a certain time. I agree to that. Because yeah. as a woman, you know, you ought to know, okay, this is my man. I'm going to lock my, you know, I got him. I'm going to go ahead on with it. You know, boom, 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 boom. There you go. Yeah. So therefore, you know. The one, the, 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 the sense is that aren't sexist roles is, I, I, I understand this cuddling. Because sometimes, you know what I mean? I, I, I can't speak for all men, but sometimes I, I personally like to be a little spoon. You know, <laughs> that's not, that's not, yeah. that's not a sexist role. I can't, but, but you know what, though? That's because, you know, when uh, men haven't given the, have men aren't always given the opportunity to show our feminine side. We have a feminine side. Masculine and feminine. It's a balance. Yin yep. and the yang. Yep. It's definitely a balance, but therefore we, we don't always get the opportunity to express that balance. We don't always get, get the opportunity to cater or foster to that particular side of who we are because society, society will make you think that if you go get your nails fucking clipped up and, tri and trimmed up that you it's gay. a bad thing. You're gay. gay. You're, gay. Exactly. You're like, what the fuck? Self-care? <laughs> I like look, look, look. I'm, I'm not trying to offend you. I like to figure my woman every now and then. So having dirty nails really, it really goes against the thing because now I'm throwing off a pH balance. Then when I go try to eat it, now it's dirty, and because my dirty ass nails is up there, that's bad for me. That's, that goes against that prevents me from having fun. But catering to myself, I feel good about me. I look good. I look presentable. I look professional. Regardless of what the fuck I'm doing, even if I am sitting on the fucking couch. True, true. I, 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 I just learned to a oh, scrubber because of Allison. Yeah. A full <laughs> scrubber? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, because beforehand, I, I would just put the soap on my hands or on a washcloth and just like that. Oh, you but got she, a loofah? Yeah, I guess a, a loofah. Oh, okay. Uh, with the, with, I, it's, a, it's, a, it's a body scrub. Yeah, the, okay. Like a brush. Uh, it's a brush, yes. It's foliating. Yes. And so when she got talk, got me on that, like, I got one for my cell phones. I got one from Dollar Tree, really simple one. And then she put me on like a, a real classy one. I use that every day. I use that all on my face. One place that don't touch is my ass, for obvious reasons. But yeah, yeah, but other than that, yeah. it's every day. And it feels good. I feel clean. I, I feel like I'm taking self care. I sometimes even put some facial stuff on to help smooth out my face. I won't do that as if it's not. But you already know. It looks good. It makes you feel good. You I'm, know, I'm all, all for doing a facial. I'm all for doing a mask. I won't call it facial. I, I won't call I'm it facial. Call, I'm calling the facial. Uh, I call it spade Boss. spade. I'm calling it spade spade. <laughs> Boss, well, it is, it's your face. It's your face. <laughs> and you're doing shit to your face. <laughs> it's not. It's a facial. It's not facial. What Boss. is it? What Boss. is it? What is it? It's face. It's face care. <laughs> Exit. Okay. Yeah. Got it. But the thing is, though, a lot of men don't take that opportunity to take care of themselves. But then once they realize that, who you trying to look hard for? You get one body. We get one body. One. So I'm not going to take care of this one motherfucker because of another nigga's opinion? <laughs> <laughs> what type of dumb shit is that? But it, 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 it rolls all through a man's life until they find out that you cannot, you can take care of yourself and not be can judge, right? Or care about the opinions of others. Because when you're a kid, you ain't no, ain't no guy taking care of themselves. They're going to get roasted, they're going to get beat up, calling names, everything. 
she's not gonna do that shit. But then they get to be like a dollhood and they find one person, that one woman who's like, you know what? It's okay to do it. Then all of a sudden, it just changes everything. Then it, opinions of others don't really make, make a big deal. But you know what though? It's because of the perspective. The perspective in which we are given from child. Okay, I'm I'm rolling it back a little bit. Well, you're right. It's what, as a man, yeah, you're not supposed to be hard is, and dirty. Right? So, uh, so <laughs> hard and dirty. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look, look. You, you, you I get you. I get you. You know what I mean? So, so what I mean is, if you're born into a certain community in life, if you're just born into a certain class, okay. If you're born into the mid, the middle class, the middle class has a certain dynamic of thinking. They have a certain genre of what should be and what shouldn't be. What a man is supposed to be in this particular class. Uh, in order for you to be a man and make it and to be would have what I have at this level, you have to have a job, you have to go to school, you have to go to college, you have to have a degree, you have to earn 127000 a year. Yeah. Right, <laughs> but they they carry themselves a certain type of way. See the quote unquote CEO. You can kind of visualize this person in a suit. This person who works in an office has a nice office building, does uh, office work all day, drives a Mercedes Benz. Yeah, yeah. right. You, that, the positive outlook is a positive uh, image. But it, it's a it's a you have to you have to be this certain thing. Yeah. Right, you have to look a certain the the, the, the image. Yes. The the ego has to match what you are. So, you know, to identify that is one thing, but when you just want to be a free thinker and you say, you know what? I just want to fucking go and get my feet done. I want my woman to hold me. A lot of those see those manly man who I run a company. What I look like having a woman hold me at night. Right, right. Right, that they're like, no, I do the whole thing because I'm the man. I do this, I do this, I run a company, I rob a Mercedes Benz, I have a nice suit, and yeah, I'm the man. I'm macho. Shallow ideals. Shallow ideals, but I dig it. It makes but, sense to me. But they are where they are. So we can't knock what they're saying yeah. because they work for them. And they got them where they are. But therefore, when it comes to about what what actually feels good. Here's what a man, quote unquote, here's what this guy says you should, says a man should be. And here's what society's understanding of what a man should be, right? But here's what I feel. Here's what I actually experience. Here's my perspective. I can be just as fucking manly as a man with my woman holding me. Let me, speaking some soft nothings to my ear. Sweet nothings. You, yeah. You're strong. <laughs> You're a good father, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Keep going. Even if it's bullshit. It Even if it's good. bullshit. It, sound good. Yeah. it sounds good to hear. You know what? I, I got you. But the but the the, 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 the bullshit is shit like, hey, you're you're getting faster in the gym every day. <laughs> 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 I've like, hey, oh been in the gym two days. What do you mean you see progress? Exactly. But, but, you I, like, I, but thank you. Like, it feels like, in my mind, I'm like, what you mean, progress? But uh, I'm not saying it, but I'm like, yeah. yeah. But you're like, I, but. I, uh, uh, <laughs> it's, it's in progress, though. Uh, 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 but it's sweet you enough. See, you see me? You see, see me? I, I did do two more. <laughs> <laughs> I did run a little faster. Uh, Maybe. Uh, <laughs> progress moves quick. Mm hmm. I'm going to go back next week and see if this motherfucker is lying. <laughs> but it gives you that yeah. little bit of motivation to, to, to keep on. Keep. Yeah. Right? But these people who are, you know, who what society says you should be versus your reality, your perspective of things, that's what differentiates a lot of people who have ears to hear. Because a lot of people won't even say, oh, I'm not trying to get my feet done. I'm not trying to get my hands. I'm not trying to be a little spoon. I'm not. I'm not trying to. But that I don't think that stops them from. In the in the, in the sense of entering the kingdom, if, if that is truly the belief, and it works out for them, and they're not harming nobody, and they still can be spiritual enough to realize that I have more masculine than I do feminine, but they are not 
you are uh, not necessarily uh, just being destructive of the feminine side, but that's just their balance where it's just eight to eight to two, eight to one, or that eight to eight to twenty percent, then in a sense, they are still as as innocent babies. Because they don't know any different. That's what they're only taught. And as long as they're not doing anything else in there to uh, sabotage others or, in, or hurt others, but still keep an honest image of themselves, an honest belief, then they're just as innocent as babies. So you stand on that, right? I stand on that, yeah. What if that person who had that ideology was gay? They were gay? Yeah. They ain't hurt nobody. <laughs> you're right. You're right. You're right. They ain't hurt nobody. And then, well, in that sense, if that was the case, I, I do personally do believe that. We well, talking about personally, man. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> 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 All right. So, 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 in the this, choice. so, the choice so, okay, so, in this sense, if they're gay, they do everything right in that sense, and that's all they know. And that's if it, if it, if it was if it was authentic from themselves it was never pressed onto them and that's authentic who they are and they that's that's their innocence that is them so then that then now then they should that's what should be the reason to still get in exactly but if it was forced upon them or they were experimental they're not really that way they're closeted they're ashamed of it then no they would not because they are not fully spiritually awake within themselves exactly but see and the problem comes in is when people choose to say, oh, no, that one thing, you're fucking gay. You cannot get in. Simply because you're gay. You're like, but wait, babies entering heaven, innocent. This is completely new to me, right? I, I, I didn't, I'm not harming anybody. I'm not here to, I found someone else who was mutually equally yoked to who I am. And to love me who was equally yoked to who I am. I didn't harm anybody else. I found a person who, who was for me, who God created for me. Mm -hmm. So now you're against my love that God created for me, but the other person who makes a choice to hate them and don't want to allow them in just because God created them that way. And those are the ones who can't want to get in. Those are the ones. Because bigotry and hatred are not spiritual awakeness. But these are the pastors. These are the lawmakers. These are the people who make the laws. These are the people who make the rules. These are the people. Who and which lets you know that a lot of them who preach entering into the kingdom, they themselves will not make it. You it is the phrase that says, "Do not be led by false idols or false." I think you guys mean idols. Yeah. Because if you if you listen to the the words of man telling you what to do and what not to do. You can't necessarily prove their work in all senses. So to follow them blindly is, is, is blasphemy. Mm -hmm. You should only follow word. And also onto that, I heard this, this speech and it made more sense than anything. If the word is spread this to all God's creation, spread the word to all God's creation, it's not about the actual words, which is why people should, should not follow what men say. It's not about the words, it's about the actions. It's, it's about seeing and believing. If you walk the path, you talk the path, you are the path, people will, will naturally follow. And you will lead a lot of people to the right place. Not only people, but you will be able to lead animals, other things, because they will understand that you have that love and compassion. But, if you're only basing it off words, you can only get, trick fools. Let me cut, cut it. Not at all. The word versus the message. So you said leading people blindly is one thing, right? Leading people's words is one thing, but following the word is one thing. But do do you think it's more important to follow someone's word or what is the message that the word is saying? Do you think it's more important to the message understand the message or to I, follow the word? I think it's more important to follow the message. Mainly because, yes, messages can be misconstrued, misconstrued or understood in numerous or different ways. But if you hear it one way and you truly act on that one way, you're not necessarily moving wrong. If you go by the word and the word was wrong, 
or your followings and then that's wasn't right at the beginning with. You're already, now you're being led astray. If you take your own interpretation of it, if I say the sky is blue, I mean, that's an objective term. That's an objective statement. Mm-hmm. Anybody look at the sky and say the sky is blue. But the people who are, besides the people who are colorblind, they may see a, a gray sky all the time. The message would be the sky is blue. That's, that's what it is. The word is sky is blue, but to them, they can understand the message. Well, to you, the sky is blue, but to me, the sky is great. I understand you're saying the sky is clear out today. Mm-hmm. The sky is, is, is beautiful out today. It's not cloud in sight. That's what the message is of that. And that's what they're going to take of that. And they go off based on what you say, and the sky is blue, and the sky is actually gray, but they can't tell the difference. You're leading them astray. You are leading them astray. So but, not, but they read deeper into what you're saying and yeah. actually understand that, like, oh, that's a metaphor of saying the clear skies. Yeah. My perspective is the word is religion. The message is always love. Because at the end of every religion, you want to get into like heaven, a place of love, a place of acceptance, a place of like-minded people, a community. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> a safe space, a safe haven, a safe community, right? But the word <clears throat> and how you get there, how you get to, to that place, is always in some vehicle of religion. Which I don't necessarily think is true. What well, I'm saying. Like, it's it's uh, not so much look, religion is, I, I guess, yeah. a lot of people do it look, through religion, but it's, belief, it's like I say this. believe words, belief is what get people actually there. But, you're, but you believe, believe in something. Not all beliefs are religion. You're right, but spirituality is not a religion, but it's what I believe in. And it's, exactly, but that, exactly. But that's but that's my my vehicle. Okay, I see. My vehicle to get to love is spirit spirituality, knowledge of self, acknowledging of, of who I am and my part in the cosmos and how I lead my actions with love. Right, Christians they walk a certain path to be acknowledged as Christians because I do X Y and Z, and at the end of the day. Love the love Christ had for me is the reason I'm is the way I'm gonna get into uh, heaven, right? Buddhism get into it, yeah. Huh? Get into it, yeah. Yeah. They, A Doja Cat once said, <laughs> you gotta get, into it. "Get into it, yeah." You get into it. <laughs> and then uh, Buddhism to be like Buddha and to live with love and compassion to be great. I have to be like Buddha. So I have to try to move accordingly. That's their vehicle to get like to get to their de- their their destination. And the port- according to them, Buddha moved with love. Absolute mm-hmm. love of things. Absolute honesty, truth. He experienced things as they are, came out walking at his mama's side. Yeah. Weird as fuck. But hey, that's just me from the outside looking in. Yeah. Okay. Normal back then. I, I don't know what happened. If it did, wow. Yeah, yeah. They say Paul Bunyan was 20 feet tall. But also, if you look in the Bible, everybody in Genesis lived up to six, seven, eight hundred years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Throughout the Bible. We can't necessarily prove that we're true or not, but what we can say is, based off, we do know is they live longer. They live a lot longer than us. Yeah. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. Which is like, a lot for spirituality. Like, like in the in the fucking floods, right? You know, I that, think Noah was supposed to be like four hundred years old about the time that. At that point in time, yeah. That after the flood, he lived an additional moment. like I think mo- he died at like I think six seven hundred years old. Yeah, I think he was like in his midlife when it happened, or like his late, yeah, his over the hill stage. Not as a like a boy lived a hundred over the hill sixty. If they live six hundred years, the other hill would be like four fifty. Yeah, things like that. But but that was the reason why it, why it, why some of the people were like, how can we have the knowledge to build this big ass boat on his own? Well, you've been alive for four hundred fucking years. Yeah. Obviously, you pick up some shit. Especially when <laughs> when you didn't have cell phones and you didn't have uh, video games, you didn't have uh, football, soccer, you didn't have anything else to distract you. But you had your only way of living was a skill. A skill. And you, you did, didn't know you just did that. You wanted, to, you wanted to eat. You just did that. Yeah. That was your skill. That was your vehicle 
to get you to a destination. Mm -hmm. So, this is a fucking super great podcast. It's going to make for good content. Hopefully, the, uh, the, uh, the humidifier, I mean, the clean air puller fresher up. It wasn't a, too big of a distraction, but 42 minutes, man, we got some things getting down.